all of you are welcome to BL1 webinar series. Those who do not know about me, I am Nilanta Veera Singha. I am doing this uh, lecturing for this subject for more than 7 years. Therefore, I can give you fair assurance uh, on the subject and uh, you will be able to enhance your confidence level uh, when you ready for the exam, right? Fine. Before we proceed with the webinar series, I thought of sharing two important points with you. Those points will be really important for you to get ready for this exam. The first point is, you know the exam structure has been changed now. It is fully MCQ. You have 50 questions. All questions are MCQ. So, student has this mindset when you look at MCQ questions. Some of you will think, ah, this is MCQ exam. Therefore, without any knowledge, we can go and sit for the exam because it is a matter of click on one answer and pass in this exam. Yes, of course, it is a matter of selecting one answer out of four or five answers, but if you do not have knowledge, that will be very difficult task. Sometimes may be easy, why? Because you do not know anything. Therefore, you should have fair knowledge about each and every topic of this subject. That is the first thing you need to understand. Second thing, since this is MCQ exam, you think are right. If you understand halfway through this entire syllabus, that will help me to handle these 50 questions. That will help, but it will be really, really difficult task for you to pass this exam. Why? Because one answer will be not significantly different from other answer. If you have four answers, sometimes, not sometimes, most of the times, answers will be similar and there can be smaller difference. Therefore, halfway through studies may not help you to pass this exam. That is the second thing you need to understand. Third one, not like written exams, when it is come to MCQ, examiner can test entire syllabus, which means both theoretical aspects, conceptualized things as well as calculations. Therefore, end to end study, understanding is really, really important for you to pass this exam. That is my first point. So, what you need to understand my first from my first point, halfway through studies will not help you to pass this exam. I will tell you why it is. And if you do not know anything about this, no point of sitting for this exam and it is required to understand this syllabus from A to Z. Why? Because this is MCQ. Examiner can set up any kind of questions. That is the first thing you need to understand. That is the first point I wanted to share with you before I proceed with this webinar today. The second point is, some of you think are right, not like earlier, no need to prepare complex calculations. We do not have many, you know, complex questions which may require more and more calculations. Therefore, it is easy for us to pass this exam. Completely wrong idea and understanding. I will tell you why it is. Let us say, if you have some understanding about, let us say, bank reconciliations or preparation of financial statement and preparation of partnership accounts and uh, accounts for not non-profit organizations, incomplete records, correction of errors. If you do not, if you know to a certain level, you can play with calculations and you can score at least part of the given marks. Let us say for one question, examiner has allocated 10 marks, but you do not know how to get 10 marks, but you know how to earn 5, 6 out of it, 10 marks. Why? Because you know to a certain level the calculations, let us say incomplete records. You know to a great extent how to handle, how to play with that question. So, then you can show your calculations to examiner, examiner will go through those calculations and give fair marks. If you are correctly 
completed it. But here the problem is what? Even though you have that half a knowledge, right? If you have some understanding about it, that will not help you to pass this exam. Why? Because you have to select the correct answer. You cannot show your calculations to examiner, you cannot share your working papers with examiner, it is a computer based exam, it is a matter of click on the right answer. Therefore, when it, when it comes to calculations, it is really really important to understand 100 percent about the concept. The other part of it is those answers also, let us say if you end up with some wrong answers that answer also will be can be there. I can show you examples when you proceed with the questions today itself. Therefore, to the point 100 percent understanding about the concept topics is really really important. Those are the two points I wanted to share with you before I proceed with webinar. The last point if I start the topics today, I want to discuss with you the structure of this webinar that will help you to watch future videos as well from the beginning. I have structured this, the content of this webinar into two parts. One part of it is complete theory and the concepts that is there in the study packet. Other part of it is that is a really important part of this webinar is MCQ questions. Unfortunately, right now for students you do not have much more examples or else more question bank kind of a thing to deal with this subject, because we are at the starting point. Therefore, it is really important for us to have many questions and it is required to practice those. Therefore, for each and every topic more than 10 MC questions I have selected from various other exams. When I say various other exams, you know chartered exams more or less you know similar to ACC exams. Therefore, I have selected most of the model questions from ACCA syllabus. When you do these ACC related questions and I have selected some other from questions from some other exams also, when you deal with this MCQ questions at the end of each and every topic that will really help you to improve your enhance your confidence to handle this subject. That is all about the webinar series and the structure of webinar and the instructions that you need to follow throughout this webinar as well as when you are ready for the exam right fine. Since this webinar series consists of both theory as well as more MC questions, I recommend for all students, when I say all students, both English medium and single medium students to watch this video, right? Fine. With that, we will start the first topic today, which is accounting and business environment. Normally, in my previous webinars as well as previous lectures, I am not giving much more attention on this, but I have changed this that idea. Why? Because the examiner has changed, the institute has changed the examination structure. When I look at some other exams, ACCA, before I prepare this slides and before I get ready for this webinar, I went through those exams, structures, papers. So, when I look at those, there are much more questions from this chapter then I understand your examiner also can give more attention on this. Why? Because this is starting point of your chartered journey. Therefore, you should understand what is accounting and what is the environment, legal and compliance environment behind this, around this subject. Therefore, we need to start from that point onwards, right. You can see how important this chapter for your exam when we go through MCQ questions, right? Fine. The first thing you need to understand, what is accounting? You are at the very first stage of chartered BL1, right? You will end up with your chartered qualification. Therefore, today itself I wanted to talk with you, discuss with you 
what is accounting financial accounting so financial accounting definition you have learnt or you have understand during your a level exams also and maybe in your some other exams if you look at accounting process the accounting process will start from where from source document from source documents transaction will take into what primary books you will record transaction in primary books so from primary books you will take those to what your general ledger from general ledger you will take that to trial balance and you see whether your double entry accounting is correct or wrong from trial balance you will prepare what financial statements that has five components by using five elements of accounting five elements of financial statements that is the simple accounting process from source document to primary books to general ledger to trial balance from that to financial statement that is fine that is accounting process that we have learnt what is accounting if you look at this slide financial accounting is a way of recording analyzing and summarizing financial data don't forget three key important words even though this is very simple and uh, easy to understand in that there are three words which are really really important what are those three words financial accounting is the way of the first word recording you record transaction where in primary books in general ledger and then you will analyze those and summarize in the financial statements for users decision making that is financial accounting right that's the first thing as financial accounting student you need to understand if someone asks from you today what is financial accounting answer is what financial accounting is the way of recording analyzing and summarizing financial data finally you will summarize where in financial statements that's the first thing you need to understand that can be a question this is mcq question mcq based exam if it is written exam exam we will not focus on this but with the changes to the syllabus this can be a question on the right hand side you can see the accounting process that i have discussed with you we'll start with we'll start this journey with source document from source document documents to journals from journals to ledger accounts from ledger to trial balance from trial balance to financial statements that is called financial accounting cycle or else accounting process that's the first part i want to discuss with you in this chapter the second point so this chapter will explain you the accounting as well as business environment so there you have three or four topics the first thing is this financial accounting and then the second point the second topic is the types of business types of entities why because you summarize according to our definition of financial accounting right it's a matter of recording analyzing and summarizing financial data where we have from where we have picked those financial data from business environment so all business that we have we can classified into three categories basically financial data can be there in proprietor or sole proprietor companies you will summarize financial data for partnerships in accounting and you will summarize analyze and record financial data for limited liability companies so then accounting process will be applicable for these three type of business what are they proprietary business partnership business as well as limited liability companies so the definition of accounting financial accounting recording analyzing summarizing financial data will be applicable for both not both all proprietor companies partnerships as well as limited liability companies 
Therefore, it is really important for us to understand the definitions of each kind of business, right. The first thing proprietary business, proprietary business means what? You have single owner for that company, single owner for that business, right. If you read the definition, I will highlight the key words in this definition that will help you to again manage what? Your MCQ questions, right. Keep highlight these keywords. Sole proprietorship is a business owned and run by one individual. Highlight the word one individual, right. Perhaps enjoying one or two assistant and controlling their works. You may have few employees, but entire control over the business with one single person, which is called what? Proprietary business. Very simple. I am not investing more time on this, why? Because you have that understanding. Quickly we will run through other two as well. Partnership means arrangement between individuals to carry out, carry on business in common with the view of profit. To earn profit, few or one or more individuals together run a business through agreement to earn profit, which is called what? Partnerships. Limited, we will discuss the differences between these three types of business and advantage and disadvantages of each type of business later on. We will first understand, we will first understand the definition of each. Third one, limited liability companies, which means limited liability status means that the business debts and the personal debts of the business owners are legally separate, which means in limited liability companies, shareholders, owners are liable only for the given capital. If I have invested let us say 1 million in my business, limited liability business, my liability will be limited to that 1 million. But when it is come to partnership and proprietor business, that is not the case. That is the big difference between limited liability companies as well as partnership and proprietor companies. In proprietor companies as well as in partnerships, you cannot say I have invested only 1 million rupees in my business, therefore my liability will be limited to that. No, your liability will be spread to what? Enhanced to your or will link with your private or personal properties as well. In the case of liquidation, bankruptcy, when you settle your liabilities, that liability will come to your personal asset as well. If you are running proprietary business or a partnership, but when it is come to limited liability companies, your liability will be limited to the given capital or to the to the investment. That is a big and the main difference when you compare with limited liability company for partnership as well as for proprietor companies. In red color you can see from legal point of view, so all proprietor and partnerships are not separate entities from their owners, right. However, limited liability companies is a legally a separate entity from its owners. So, partnership and proprietor companies, you cannot separate business from you, owners and business will be the same, but when it is come to limited liability companies, owners and business is two different entities. I will use simple example to explain this in a simple manner, in a way to understand in a you know uh, simple way. Example is this, let us say if I need to take a legal action against the company, I need to file that case on behalf of company name if it is a limited liability company. 
But if it is proprietor or partnership, that legal case I had to file against, not against the company. You can file against the company, but the liability will be spread to owners also. That is the difference when it is come to legal aspect. Accounting purpose, very important. Whether you are a separate legal entity or not, accounting process is applicable for all three types of business. All three entities are treated as separate from their owners when it is come to accounting process. This is called business entity concept. In Singhala, Apimikadikana, Vyapar Ekaka Sankalpya, which is called what? Business entity concept. For accounting purpose, all three entities are separated from their owners, but from legal point of view, if you take legal actions, only limited liability company you can separate from their owners. That is the difference between company, limited liability company and partnership and proprietor companies. Right. Quickly we will go through the advantage and disadvantages also. Why? Because again this is MCQ based exam can be tested, right. In pilot paper they have tested, right. We will go through those questions as well. So, if it is proprietor company, right, what are the key advantages that you have? Limited paperwork and less and less uh, cost in establishing, right. Accounting process, application of financial reporting process, application of accounting policy, having proper accounting policy is not mandatory for proprietor companies. Therefore, less paperwork and it is easy for you to start proprietor companies, right. Not like private limited companies or limited liability companies. Owners has complete control over the business. One person, one individual will control the entire business. All decisions will be taken by one individual when it comes to what? Proprietor companies. That is the second advantage. Third one, owners is entitled to profit and the ownership of the assets. The entire profit you generate from the business will enjoy one person. There is no profit sharing among other people. You have few employees, maybe two, three employees, you pay salary for them, but the entire profit is with one individual. That is also one benefit, right. Other one can be highly flexible. There is no much more rules and regulations are applicable. There is no barriers to take decisions. You are the person who decide whether you take a risk or not. You are the person who decide where to invest the excess profit. All the decisions taken by one person, flexibility is there to do whatever you want as far as those are within the legal framework. The last point, sole proprietor do not need to make their financial statement publicly available. You do not need to share your financial information with general public. Why? Because you are the only one individual you en who enjoy the profit. That information will be limited to your review, you will not share with anyone else. That is the one, that is also one advantage. So, you have list of advantage, other side you have disadvantages of having proprietor companies. The first disadvantage is owners are personally liable for all assets and debts. In the case of bankruptcy or in the event of liquidation, by using entity assets, you can settle liabilities. If there is any unsettled liabilities, you have to settle by using your personal properties. Unlimited liability you have. Second disadvantage, person, uh, personal property may be vulnerable for debt and other business liabilities. That is what I told you. Your personal properties also you have to use to settle unsettled liabilities. Large 
sum of capital are less likely to be available. You might not be able to collect enough capital from various sources. Why? Because you are the only one person who manages the business. You can go for bank loans. So, bank also will be given limited funds. There are, there is no different, different shareholders or other people involved for to fund the business, limited funding sources may lead to long working hours without normal employees. So, if you are working or if you take limited liability company, you have uh, uh, 8 day working shift based on the country rules and regulations. But when it come to proprietor companies, there is no starting hours and there is no ending point when it come to work. Maybe you work more than 8 hours, 10 hours per day. Why? Because you are the only person who is there to control the business, to take decisions about the business, right? That is also one disadvantage. The last point may be issue, issues of continuity of the business in the event of death or illness. If the owner death, what will happen? The entire business will be collapsed. The going concern is highly doubtful. There is significant doubt about going concern in the event of death and illness of the owners. So, that is all about advantage and disadvantage of what? Proprietor companies. When you look at partnerships, quickly we will go through advantage and disadvantage again like proprietor companies. Less strength reporting obligations, right? Similar to proprietor companies. There is no hard and fast rule to follow accounting policies and accounting uh, standards. You need to follow, but there is no hard and fast rule, rule on that. No requirement to make financial account policy available, no auditing requirements, that is also one benefit. Additional capital may be raised because more people, you can compare to proprietor companies, you can find additional capital because there are more one or more, uh, more than one partners in the partnership. Division of role and responsibilities and increased skills. So, authorities, responsibilities you can divide among the partners, that is also one benefit when it comes to decision making. And sharing risk and losses between more people. In the event of loss making situation, that loss you can share between more people losses you will not enjoy alone, that is also one benefit we have. Disadvantages, partners are jointly personally liable for all the debts, similar to proprietor companies in the event of liquidation as well as in the event of bankruptcy. Partners, they have settled unsettled liabilities by using their personal assets as well. There may be issues of continuity of business in the end of death and illness of any of the partners. So, if what, what partner death or uh, remove or decide to go out from the partnership, going concern will be doubtful case. Slower decision making since both party agreements is required, not like proprietor companies both all partners in the partnership should agree for decision making. If one partner reject any decision, you might not be able to proceed with that decision. Decision taken will be bit delayed. When one partner leave, partnership automatically dissolved. If one partner take a decision to go out from the business, the going concern again will be doubtful. So, those are the advantages and disadvantages of partnership. You are more familiar about those. Limited liability companies, again advantages and disadvantages we will discuss. Advantages if you look at, limited liability make investment less risky. Why? Because you are liable only for that investment. Your liability will not spread to your personal properties. Limited liability companies make makes raise finance easier. So, shareholders can 
issue shares and find what required investment not like partnership and proprietors. Third one a limited liability company has a separate legal entity. So, in front of court shareholders and the company two different business entity concept will be applicable in this case. Fourth one there are often tax advantage to being a limited liability companies. So, this is very important point. So, if you are a limited liability company different different tax rates are applicable. Let us say you have limited company and you are doing what export business. So, then you will tax you will be taxed at the rate of 14 not like uh, other company rates. So, for companies you have some tax advantages as well. Last point it is relatively easier to transfer shares from one owner to another not like partnership you cannot transfer your uh, investment in one part, uh, partnership to another partner easily, but here not like that you can sell shares to another person quickly if you want to go out from the company right. Disadvantages sometimes for me those are not disadvantages from governing point of view, but look looks like disadvantages. Limited liability companies have published annual financial statement that have a cost you have to prepare financial statement and you have to share financial information with all shareholders sometimes even confidential information you have to share with shareholders. So, from shareholders it may go out to other third parties as well that is also one disadvantage. Limited liability company financial statements have to comply with legal and accounting requirement. So, when you prepare financial statement of limited liability companies you have to follow applicable financial reporting framework which means you have to follow LKS and SLFRS right. Third one financial statement of limited liability companies have to be audited uh, auditing is mandatory for what limited liability companies we will discuss when it is come to come to corporate governance part of the chapter why auditing is required for limited liability companies right. Because simply you are managing others money you manage shareholders money as management therefore, auditing is really important right. Last point share issues are regulated by law you cannot issue shares as you wish there is a law behind that you have to follow that follow those laws and regulations when you issue shares. So, that is all about three types of entities and the advantage and disadvantages of those be ready for you to handle MCQ from advantages and disadvantages as well as characteristic of this three type of business right fine. The last point if you look at in the slide shareholders and board of directors what do you think there is there is a question mark shareholders are similar to board of directors or not this is one tricky question that I am asking from students. Some of you think ah, shareholders are board of directors and board of directors are the shareholders no completely wrong. Shareholders are the people who have invested their money in the business and they are expecting what dividend as a return for their investment. You can purchase shares of John Keels and you will become shareholder of John Keels. You can purchase shares of Dialog, then you will be shareholder of Dialog, but you will not represent the board. Board of directors are the people who govern the business on behalf of whom shareholders. They are the people who take decisions on behalf of shareholders that is the difference, but in some cases shareholders can be represent the board. Shareholders can be part of board which means board of directors, but all directors are not shareholders that is the thing you need to understand. I am repeating it again shareholders can be directors of the company can be, but not all shareholders are directors other way around 
board of directors are not shareholders, right? Board of directors are the people who run the business on behalf of shareholders. In that board, shareholders can be there. Not all shareholders represent the board. That is the point you need to understand. Moving on, that is the question. Look at this question. Identify whether the following statements are true or false. This is how you examine can test your understanding through MCQ questions. A. Shareholders receive annual accounts prepared in accordance with legal and professional requirements. True or false? Read the other elements of this other answers also. Employees always receive company accounts. Correct? Completely wrong. According to the things that we have discussed so far, accounts are available, financial data available for whom? Shareholders, not for all employees. If you are a warehouse in charge, those financial statements are not available for you. B, wrong. Tax authorities will receive public published account and such and uh, as much supplementary details as they need to assess tax liable profit. Correct or wrong? Tax authorities will receive the published account and much supplementary details as they need to assess the tax liability liable tax payable on the profit. Leave it. Read the D. This is the way you should handle MCQ equations. Whatever complete wrong answers you can eliminate and deal with other answers. Bank frequently require more information than is supplied in the publish accounts when considering application for loan and overdraft facilities. So, that is correct sometimes for you to give a loan from a bank, bank will require some more information. So, D also wrong, sorry correct, true. So, the question is identify whether the following statements are true or false. This is not MCQ, you have to comment on each and every answer. First one, shareholder receive annual accounts, yes correct. B, employee always receive company accounts, false. C, tax authorities will receive publish account and such and uh, as much supplementary details as they need to assess tax payable on the profit. True, bank frequently require more information than, uh, than is supplied in the publish account, true right? Small question. The second part of the chapter is governance. Our topic is what? Financial accounting and the environment of it. Environment around financial accounting. So, throughout that journey, we have discussed what is financial accounting, what are the type of entities, what are the advantages and disadvantages of having uh, of each and every type of business. In the last part of the game, not the last part of the game, the middle part of the chapter is what? Governance. So, governance, when I explain you, it is really important to understand the corporate governance, right? Before I start with the definition, I will use the board to explain you the definition of governance, right? So, basically we are talking about corporate governance, corporate governance, right. So, when I say corporate governance, not like financial accounting and other type of business that we have discussed, this is very new topic to you all. You do not know about corporate governance, but you know what? Good governance in the country, Yahapalani. Similar to Yahapalani, in country for business also there is a governance we will identify that as what corporate governance 
right fine. So, what is corporate governance in short simply you have your organization structure organization structure plus you have business processes processes right you have organization structure and the business processes right. So, corporate governance definition is you direct organization structure and business process direct monitor and control organization structure and the business process you direct monitor control for what purpose to achieve business objectives to achieve business objectives. This is what the corporate governance means. Organization structure means what? Organization structure means you have your chairman of the company and you have board of directors sorry CEO you have then under CEO board of directors under board of directors senior management under senior management different different level of management employees are there that is called organization structure hierarchy that you have discussed in your level exams. Business processes. So, each and every business you have inventory management process, payroll management process, property plant and equipment management process, purchasing process those are the business processes. Structure and those business processes you will direct monitor control for what to achieve business objectives which is called corporate governance simple structure business processes direct monitor control to achieve business objectives we will identify that as what corporate governance why this corporate governance is important we need to figure out that also always question why do we need to direct monitor control structure and the business processes to achieve business objectives. Why do we need to direct and control basically? Structure and the business process to achieve business objectives. If you can figure out that, we can answer to that question. Why do we require corporate governance? Right? Fine. Let me explain that. Why do we require corporate governance? <laughs> I am sharing with you the powerful message and I recommend you not to forget this throughout this chartered journey. Why? Because you will deal with this in many areas, in many areas. Therefore, do not forget this concept. In your business, you have shareholders and you have board of directors and the management. I told you the difference between these two. Shareholders can be a part of board of director, part of the board, but all board of directors are not shareholders. All shareholders are not directors of the company. If you purchase 100 shares of John Keels, you will not be a director of John Keels. Right? And all the directors of John Keels are not having shares also, right. So, here shareholders when they invest money, they are expecting what? Their main expectation is what? Profit. They want profit, but management their requirement is what? Not the profit, salary and other benefit like bonus. These are the objectives of these people. They are investors of the business, they are the people who manage the business, right. So, the relationship between these two, right, they have invested money, 
right? Shareholders has invested, they have invested and they are managing business. They have invested money in the business and they are managing their investments. When they manage their investment, they are required salary and the bonus. When shareholder invest money, they read profit. So, their objectives are two different objective mismatch. Objectives are mismatching, they require profit, they require salary. This objective mismatch we identify as what? Agency theory or else we call it as agency conflict. Agency conflict, fight, mismatch. In management we call it as what? Agency theory. Therefore, because of this conflict, <coughs> shareholder they do not know whether management is working to earn profit. Why? Because their intention is not to earn profit, their intention is to get salary and other benefit. Finance managers worry about these things, when, they, when I can take my next promotion, when are they going to declare bonus, when, are, when they are planning to you know promote me into next level they do not worry about the profit. Therefore, shareholders will tell look here management I need uh, let us say 10 million profit. If you give me this 10 million profit, I will give you 10 percent salary increment and 5 times bonus. This target will be given to whom? Management. If they achieve, achieve this target, if they achieve this target, they will give this benefit to them. That is how business is running, right? That is how the corporate environment is working. Then they are chasing behind this 10 million. Why? If they achieve this 10 million, they are eligible for these benefits. Let us say they end up with 9 million actual. Now, what will happen? They are not eligible for 10 percent salary increments and 5 times bonus that will happen. Shareholders will tell look here management board of directors my target was to achieve 10 million, but you have end up with ended up with 9 million. Therefore, sorry you are not eligible for 10 percent salary increment and 5 times bonus. That can be the answer. Therefore, management will understand that problem and somehow they will try to manipulate this 9 million to 10 million. They can manipulate. How do you manipulate financial information? Remove all the provisions. Shareholders, they do not know the requirement of provisions. They do not know about accounting standard. Do not do stock write-off. Shareholders, they do not know the requirement of stock write-off. Do not do debtors impairment. Shareholders, they do not know the requirement for debtors impairment. Why? Because those required, those are required by accounting standards. Somehow, you can manipulate this. Do not depreciate some, depreciate some of the assets. If you do not depreciate, your profit will be increased, but that is completely wrong application. Therefore, shareholders, they are required to implement corporate governance in their business. If not, management will do this manipulation. Understand? Why do we require corporate governance? Shareholders and the people who manage the business are not always same. When shareholders are different from board of directors, it is really required to apply what? Corporate governance. To ensure that you are applying right financial accounting policies when they run the business. Now, you can understand the requirement of corporate governance. Look at the screen. Corporate governance is the system by which
companies are companies and other entities are directed and controlled highlight the words directed and controls right these are the two key important words corporate governance is a system that system will direct and control the business to achieve their business objectives which is called corporate governance so why do we require corporate governance i explain the board you can see that in the screen as well shareholders and directors shareholders they are the owners and their requirement is objective is profit and directors they are the people who run the business control the business and their objective is to earn salary and other benefit there's objective mismatch because of this objective mismatch directors the people who manage the business can manipulate financial information to avoid that manipulation it is required to implement what corporate governance right that is the induction to corporate governance as a part of governance in sri lanka right what are the laws and regulations applicable to govern the business so one law which govern organizations in sri lanka is what number 7 2007 company act 2007 number 7 of 2007 company act from that company act these are required by that act what are they we need to establish duties of company directors what are the duties and responsibilities clearly declared in company act why for better corporate governance directors responsible to prepare financial statement also explain they are in company act form and content of financial statement also explain in company act requirement for financial statements to be audited for certain companies also also declare through what company act so company act by itself introduce some governance for organizations you must follow these things why it's a law it's act passed by the parliament number 7 of 2007 company act you must follow these things why do we require to follow this to ensure organizations governance right one part of governance second part responsibility for financial statement really really important slide who is responsible to prepare financial statement of the company sometimes people think auditors are responsible to prepare financial statement no completely wrong read this directors are responsible for the preparation of financial statement of the company specifically directors are responsible for preparation of the financial statement of the company in accordance with applicable financial reporting framework ah who is primarily responsible for preparation of financial statements directors board of directors not the auditors the internal not only that internal control necessary to enable preparation of financial statement that are free from material misstatement whether due to fraud or errors to implement internal controls that enable preparation of financial statement also lies with whom directors what are the internal controls that enable preparation of financial statement you may wonder maybe this is the very first time you are hearing this word called internal controls right understand this preparation of financial statement is legal requirement from company act that we have discussed in the previous slide but trial balance bank reconciliations debtors reconciliations there's no mandatory requirement to prepare those without a trial balance you can prepare financial statements without bank reconciliations you can prepare financial statements without salary reconciliation debtors reconciliations you can prepare financial statements all these bank reconciliation debtor reconciliation sales reconciliations trial balance are what internal controls to ensure reliability of financial statements 
who is responsible to implement those internal controls board of directors so their responsibility is spread to that also not only to prepare financial statement but to implement internal controls also in a to enable financial preparation of financial statements third one to prevent and detect frauds people think auditors are there to detect prevent frauds no completely wrong board of directors they are responsible to prevent detect fraud also it is the directors responsible to ensure that entity complies with the laws and regulations there's auditing standard also for this which is not applicable for your level but directors are responsible to follow or comply their business with laws and regulations in short there are four key responsibilities to ensure good governance in the organization right first one directors are responsible to prepare financial statements directors are responsible to implement internal controls to enable preparation of financial statement directors are responsible to prevent detect frauds and directors are responsible to comply with laws and regulations when they run their day to day business activities don't forget those four key points why because can be tested by asking what directors responsibility right then next one regu all these things come under what governance these are required to ensure organizations governance right company requirement and responsibilities of directors and regulatory context in the financial reporting in sri lanka right company act number 7 of 2007 require company to prepare financial statement sometimes you don't know we prepare financial statement by but you don't know who is asking to prepare financial statement number 7 of 2007 company act in that section 151 says company should prepare financial statements that gives true and fair view satya ha sadharana viveka of the state of the affairs of the company as at the balance sheet date and profit and loss account loss profit or loss or income and expenditures as the case may be of the company for the accounting period ending on that balance sheet date so that is what company act requirement next one to ensure governance of the organizations accounting standard also to ensure what governance in sri organizations right to ensure governance good governance so to ensure good governance yes it's required accounting standard but the development the journey of accounting standard it is really important to understand so this is very simple right can be tested they have tested this in acc therefore there's a greater chance is they have to test this question in the ca sri lanka paper also right fine iasb international accounting standard board iasb stand for international accounting standard board so they develop ias and ifrs iasb developed ias and ifrs which means international accounting standard as well as international financial reporting standard to ensure governance of accounting governance of what financial statements financial controls in sri lanka ca sri lanka will interpret ias into lks ifrs into slfrs understand to entire world iasb international accounting standard board develop iasn ifrs for sri lanka ca sri lanka will convert or interpret ias and iasa I, I, ifrs like uh, ias into lks and ifrs into slfrs in short iasb prepare ias and slfrs ifrs ca sri lanka interpret ias into lks ifrs into slfrs that is how govern accounting standard in the world 
as well as in Sri Lanka. Next point you need to understand when we talk about governance as well as environment of accounting, legal versus commercial view of accounting. We call it as what? Substance over the form. In accounting, more than legal part of the transaction, it is important to understand the substance. In Singhala, we call it as Neeti me tatve tavada sorupe ayvedagat. More than the legal form, the substance is the important when you prepare what? Financial info statements. We will give priority for what? Substance, not for the legal form. Read this. Substance of the form in accounting in, is an accounting concept which means that economic substance of the transactions and events must be recorded in the financial statements than just their legal form in order to present true and fair view of the affairs of the entity. More than legal form, what is important? Substance. Look at this example, then you will understand this easily. If two companies swap inventories of identical nature, right? I have this item in my hand, I swap with another entity, similar identical assets, right? In that, legally ownership of the goods has been changed. Legally ownership has been changed, but there is no commercial purpose of the transaction because it does not generate any profit or loss. Substance of the firm principle disallow recognizing revenue by any of companies even if they have entered into valid enforceable contract. Let us say I have a Toyota car, let us say premier car, I exchange that with another entity for similar Toyota premier car, same mileage, same year of manufacture and same features identical. Legally you have exchange the assets, but substance if you look at there is no profit to loss. Therefore, we will not recognize it as what revenue or in the financial statement why substance no profit to the organization. So, in accounting what you need to understand through this concept legal form is not relevant, what is relevant substance, right? fine that is called substance over the form. The next point this also to ensure what? Good governance, ethics in accounting and business, fundamental ethical principles is important in this case. In this case. So, CA Sri Lanka they have published code of ethics that we need to follow when we run our day to day business. In that first point is what? Fundamental ethical principles. They said please comply with these five fundamental ethical principles. Right? So, there are threats as well as safeguard also for this, but we are not worrying about threats to fundamental ethical principles and safeguard to protect fundamental ethical principles from that th from those threats. But here what we are worrying about five fundamental ethical principles. What those are? First one, you need to comply with this first first five, uh, five fundamental ethical principle in that first thing is what? Integrity. Integrity means in Singhala we call it as what? Avankavin, honest, be straightforward. When you act as accountant, finance manager, CFO, finance director, maintain your integrity level, level of honesty. Avankavin, objectivity, you are not biased to anybody, you are not biased to company, you are not biased to shareholders, you are not biased to auditors you are not biased to anybody, you are independent objectivity, right? Do what you need to do, not in favor of anybody, which is called objectivity. 
professional competence and due care which means you should have enough competence to perform your duties. Let us say you are a qualified HR human resource manager, but you cannot act as what? Act as whom? Financial accountant. Why? You do not have enough competence. To prepare financial statement, you should have enough knowledge, competence. Without that competence, do not perform. Duke means salakili matu end again. Kya, what are salakili matu end? Duke. Right? When you prepare financial statements, when you manage financial accounting process of the company, work with Duke. Fourth one, confidentiality. In short, confidentiality means clients confidential information. Right? Why company the confidential information should not disclose to anybody unless it is required by the law to do so. If it is required by the law to declare, you can declare. If not, clients confidential information you should not disclose to anybody in the organization, which is called what? Confidentiality. Last point, professionalism, which means professional behavior. Do not bring discredit to your profession. If you are a chartered accountant, do not damage the goodwill of institute do not bring discredit to your profession, which is called professional behavior. So, code of ethics require you to comply with these five fundamental ethical principles. Next point, consequences of unethical behavior. If you do not comply with these given five fundamental ethical principles, you will end up with these consequences. Examples, Enron company collapse in 2001 because of unethical behaviors. AIG company collapsed in 2005 because of the unethical behaviors. Lehman Brothers collapsed 2008 because of the unethical behaviors. Olympus Corporation collapsed in 2011 recent failure because of the unethical behaviors. These are well famous global entities. They collapse bankrupt. Why? They did not comply with these fundamental ethical principles. They act without the ethical, without comply with these ethical principles. The results, you can google these company names and see and understand what happened to those collapse. In Sri Lanka, Pramukha Bank collapse. Recently, we can use this company names, why? Because all of you aware about these cases, ETI collapse, why? Unethical behaviors. Therefore, results of unethical behaviors will be very, very dangerous. Therefore, you have to act, you have to comply with these fundamental ethical principles when you run your day to day duties and responsibilities, right? Fine. That is the end of first chapter. Now, we will see what are the questions that they have tested in your study pack as well as what are the model paper questions that are the exam that other professional accounting bodies they have tested. This is really important for you to ready for the exam paper because there are more than 10 MCQ questions I am going to discuss with you. These five questions I have picked from your study pack. After these five questions, we will move into discuss ACCA, ACCA paper questions, MCQ. Fill in the blanks. Financial reporting is a way of, I told you at the very first time, uh, very first in my very first slide, in a way of, but recording, analyzing, and summarize in financial data. Three key important words. A business entity is owned and run by alpha, beta and gamma. What type of business is this an example of sole proprietor, partnership, limited liability company, none of above. It is what? Alpha, beta, gamma, they run a business which means it is what? Partnership. Answer is B. What is corporate governance? Corporate governance, in short, 
you direct monitor control organization structure and the business process to achieve business objectives very simple the directors of the companies are responsible for, uh, for the preparation of financial statement of the company true or false yes it's very true sole proprietor must make their accounts publicly available true or false proprietor companies they don't require to present or publish their accounts publicly false right so those are the five questions where they are in the study pack very simple questions more than these questions what is important i told you i have a question bank from different different exams we'll move in to discuss those mcq questions relating to this chapter and relating to our discussion right fine so at the end of uh, presentation i have uh, taken those questions right fine so from this point onwards those mcq questions are there right you try yourself and see whether your judgment your answer is correct or wrong when we discuss these things right fine first one who is who issues international financial reporting standards we have discussed or not yes we have discussed right the ifrs advisory committee the stock exchange columbus stock exchange international accounting standard board the government what is the answer we have discussed global accounting standard developed by whom issues by whom iasb answer is c the international accounting standard board will issue financial reporting standard answer is c question number 2 which group of people are most likely to be interested in financial statement of sole traders right proprietor company wala kawuda financial statement wala hungak interest right underline the word sole traders this is the tricky word tani pujjal vyapar right shareholders of the company you can ignore that answer completely why because shareholders are not there in what companies proprietor companies shareholders are not there therefore any answer consist number 1 you can remove that is the way you should handle exam questions right so in that context answer a and d you can remove straight away because you know shareholders of the company means shareholders are not there for sole traders the business bankers bank managers ah correct bank managers are worrying about financial statement of proprietor companies sole trader tax authorities yeah tax authorities also will be interesting on this why because you have to pay tax on your profit therefore tax authorities also will interest on your financial numbers so 2 and 3 yes 2 and 3 is correct for financial analysis financial analyst for sole traders you know application of accounting standard is not mandatory therefore financial analyst will not much more interesting on what sole traders financial informations not only that sometimes for them those financial informations are not visible if so how can they interest on that therefore answer 1 and 4 is not relevant so answer 2 and 3 will be the correct answer so answer 2 and 3 is there in b so ans the correct answer is what b 2 and 3 only right understand the way they have tested these questions 
which of the following statements are true is or are true. Bahad Rekhan Vakyam Valing, Vakya Dekhing, Niveradi Vakyam Okadhi Gilhaan, Niveradi Statement Dekha, right? The shareholder need a statement of financial prospects. Now, you can understand the importance of understanding type of business as well as differences of each type of business as well as advantages and disadvantages of each and every type of business. Without that understanding, how do you handle this question? Right? Read it. The shareholders needs statement of financial prospect, okay. That is an indication of future progress. Why to understand future progress? Correct. However, supply of goods on credit need a finance statement of financial position. For what? An indication. Why? Because that is an indication of the entity's current state of affairs. Now, understand the level of knowledge you should have. Nikang, wating, wading, baagat, then again, here I am exam question handle karan, baagi nika, terungan no the prashna ek meeka. This answer has two elements. Read carefully. Shareholders needs Shareholder needs statement of financial prospect. For why? For what? To understand why because that is an indication of future progress. However, supplier of goods on credit needs statement of financial position that is an indication of the current state of affairs. Which means shareholders they do not want financial position. No, they also need to understand current state of affairs of the business. On other hand, the suppliers who provide goods also need to understand future progress of the business. Therefore, both shareholder and suppliers need to understand both future progress of the business as well as current state of affairs. Therefore, answer 1 is wrong, false easy or difficult to figure out this. If you do not know anything, you do not know anything, that is fine. I told you at the beginning of this session, half a studies is very, very dangerous. You think all right, correct. So, elders are worrying about future progress, suppliers are worrying about current states. No, to supply goods, suppliers also need to understand future progress also. Shareholders need to understand current state of affairs of the business. Therefore, statement 1 is false. Look at statement 2. The objective of financial statements to provide financial in, uh, information about financial position, performance and changes in the financial position of an entity that is useful to wide range of users in making economic decision. This is not there in this chapter, but that is there in conceptual framework. According to conceptual framework, the objective of financial statement is to provide information about financial position performance, changes in financial position of the entity that is useful to wide range of wide range of users in making economic decision. In that context, statement 2 is correct. Therefore, answer B is the correct answer, right. Both 1 and 2 correct, uh, 1 and 2 wrong, neither 1 and 2 also wrong, which means C and D wrong, only the correct answer is what? B. 1.4, question number 4. Be careful, do not hurry to answer this question, right. You have to be careful when you handle these exam questions. 
I told you one answer can be much more similar to other answer. You can understand that if you are with me when we discuss question number 3. Look at now question number 4. Which of the following are advantages of trading as a limited liability company? Limited liability company aknang monodho na advantages. Right, first one operating as a limited liability company makes raising finance easier because additional shareholders can be issued, additional shares can be issued to raise additional cash. Correct or wrong? Yes, if it is a limited company to raise finance, you can issue additional shares. So, statement 1 is correct, right? Which of the following is are advantages? Yes, first one is an advantage. So, answer, so first, first one is an advantage. Second one, open on advantages. Operating as a limited liability company is more riskier than operating as sole trader because shareholders of the business are liable for all debts of the business whereas sole traders is only liable for debt up to the amount has invested completely wrong according to our discussion limited liability companies they are liable shareholders liable for their investment for their share investment but sole and partnership companies at the time at the date of at the time of liquidation or at the point of bankruptcy, they are liable for the unsettled liabilities debts for their personal properties as well. So, first answer is correct, point number two is wrong. So, then answer is what? A only uh, one only because two is wrong therefore answer is what a right 1.5 which of the following best describe corporate governance look at this we have discussed this question right we have answered this question corporate governance do not think this has an easy ex exam I told you Bhagavad Gita read a b c d corporate governance is the system rule and regulation surrounding financial reporting there is no rule and regulation when it comes to corporate governance we have not discussed anything about that corporate governance is the system yes it is a system by which companies and other entities are directed and controlled huh. Can you remember structure and the processes directed, monitored and controlled to achieve business objectives. I told you do not forget two key important words controlled and directed. Yes, answer is B, but read C also. Corporate governance is carried out only by finance department, completely wrong. It is applicable for entire organization. Corporate governance is system by which entity monitor its impact to the natural environment completely wrong. So, the correct answer is what? Answer B. 1.6 which of the following statements is slash R true? Niveradi statements There are three statements thereafter you have to go for the answer. First of all you need to define you have to conclude with a 1, 2, 3, false or true, right? You have to answer the question is what? What are the, what are the true statements? The directors of the company are ultimately responsible for the preparation of financial statement, even if the majority of the works 
on works on them is performed by finance department. Finance department take a majority of that board of directors are ultimately responsible for preparation of financial statement. Correct or wrong? Completely correct. Can you remember four responsibilities of finance board of directors? They are responsible for preparation of financial statement. They are responsible to design and implement internal controls. They are responsible to prevent fraud and errors. They are responsible to follow laws and regulations. First point is what? Preparation of financial statement. First statement is true. Uttaradra Balapama, first one is therefore each and every answer. Therefore, you can easily figure out yes, first one is correct. Smart students will come to that conclusion. In my opinion, no need to read even one, the statement number one. Why? In the given four answers, the first one is there. It is a matter of reading two and three to see whether those are true and four, true or false. Following statement, key one day couldn't. Hari kila uttara thar balpa mama pino. Poko the hamma uttere kama statement number one nikiti you know. Smart students will understand in that way also to save the time, right? No need to read first one. Second one, if financial statements are audited, then the responsibility for financial statement instead of instead fall onto auditors instead of the directors completely wrong if the financial statement are auditors preparation of financial statement lies with auditors correct no auditing is separate engagement auditors will come and audit and give their opinion saying that financial statements are true or false sorry true and fair view that is a requirement of company act and there are auditing standard also for that which is not a part of the syllabus but when you audit financial statement, the responsibility for preparation is of financial statement will not pass to auditors, still that remains with whom? Remains with board of directors. Second statement, false. Third one, there are generally no laws surrounding the duties of directors in managing affairs of the company, wrong no? There are laws and regulations applicable for directors or responsibility. Therefore, statement 1 and sorry 2 and 3 are false, only the first statement is true. So, answer is what? A, only 1, right? 7, 1.7. I told you I am giving more MCQ questions throughout this webinar series. Why? You do not have much more MCQ questions in the history. Right? Therefore, be with me to discuss, to figure out the correct answer for all MCQ questions. According to ISB conceptual framework, that I have not discussed, but if you look at previous webinar series, the conceptual framework that we have discussed because I told you I might not be able to cap cover the entire syllabus throughout this webinar series. We have selected what we have not discussed in the previous webinar series. Therefore, you have to go and refer or watch previous web, uh, uh, webinar series to understand conceptual framework. But I have selected one question from that also. Why? Why? Because in my this video, I have not touched that, but really important for exam. According to ISB conceptual framework, which of the following is not an objective of financial statements? Are not an objective. Objective no one name of the Right? Fine. Read this. Providing information regarding financial position of the company. Yes, it is one, one objective. Providing information regarding performance of the organization, business. Yes, it is also one objective. Enabling users to access the performance of the management to aid decision making. That is also one objective. Fourth one, helping to assess 
the going concern state of the business. Bagita Iganagatut make the word Uttaranati. According to conceptual framework, we have discussed the objective financial statement. Going concern, assessing the going concern status is not an objective, but providing information about financial position performance and enabling enabling users to assess the performance of the management to their decision making. All these three are objective objectives of financial statements according to what conceptual framework. But going concern they are talking about under conceptual framework, but that is not an objective understand right. Going concern ki negati no conceptual framework ki, but it is not an objective. So, then correct answer is what? Answer D. 1.8 question number 8 again it is from conceptual framework IASB conceptual framework defines user groups user group defined ka you know. which of the following is not an information need for investor group right investors letter Avashi known information right. Before I answer this question, right, I will explain you one simple thing that you need to understand from conceptual framework, right. And this is really important for you to handle exam questions from conceptual framework, right which is not directly relate into our chapter today, but it is important that is why I am uh, I thought of talking about this little in detail and that is the reason to select this question as well, right fine. If you look at your financial the balance sheet uh, format, right balance sheet simple balance sheet format, it is like this. Right, simple format. You have non-current assets. Right, under that, under asset side, you have non-current assets. First, let's say this much, and you have current assets. This much, you have total asset. Asset. And equity and liability other side, right under that you have equity and you have non-current liabilities, right and you have current liabilities. This is the format of the balance sheet. If someone asks from you the definition of balance sheet, give this answer, right. So, this side you have what kind of people? Equity provided by investors, right. Non current liabilities, which means basically bank loans and leases given by whom? lenders, bankers, current liabilities, creditors, they are the people who have invested in the business. So, in balance sheet downside you have the investments, they are the people who have invested, investors basically. They have given money, money to the business, invested, funded, provide funds, funds, which means they are funding the business, understand, they are funding the business, they have given money to the business, but none of them will involve 
for day to day business activities. Shareholders invested, will they come and take decisions about day to day business activities? No. Bankers, they provide bank loans, but are they involved in business decisions? No. Creditors, they provide goods on credit basis, but they do not involve for day to day business activities. They are another day. By using their funds, board of directors, they have invested. Ah, here you have investments. By using this for money, they have invested in non-current assets and current assets. These investments managed by whom? Board of directors or management. So, balance sheet means investment versus funding. Funding. Board of directors, they are accountable for these people's investments. Why do we prepare financial statement to provide information to these three parties? Management, business activities, balance in no. If I give you this much of money, let us say 1000 rupees, that should be tallied to investment. I have invested in these areas. To give this picture, we prepare balance sheet. So, balance sheet means investment versus funding. Sarala, any? Shareholders are here, minna vaya dunna salite ma invest kara, vaya siya dunna, minna seek investment at the neke balance, you know. That is called balance sheet. Right? Now look at the question. 1.7. According to ISB conceptual framework, which is the following is not an objective. Ah. Provide information about financial position. Yes, we are providing information. Provide information about performance. Yes, we are providing. Enabling users to access the performance of the management to aid decision making. Yes, A, B, C correct, but is incorrect from uh, conceptual framework. Going concern assessment is not an objective. So, correct answer is D, which is not an objective of conceptual framework. 1.8, question number 8, IASB conceptual framework defines user groups, okay. which of the following is not an information need for investors group, ah, first 1.7 actually we have gone through, sorry about it, 1.8 is a question, assessment of repayment ability of the entity, right. Understand, not an information need. Assessment of repayment ability of the entity. Investor group. Investors are the people who have invested in the business. And repayment of loan. Are they interesting about repayment of loan? Read the balance answers also before you conclude it. Measuring performance and risk and return. If you have invested in the business, you are worrying about risk and the return of that investment. Yes, of course. Taking decision about holding investment. Uh, you will take a decision by using financial information to hold the decision or to withdraw uh, hold to investment or withdraw to investment or further increase that investment. Take in buy and sell decision. You need information to decide whether to buy or sell the investment. What information only to decide to invest further, to buy another shares or to hold the investment or to withdraw from it. So, C and D, yes, you require information for to take decisions on holding investment as well as to buy or sell. You know, C, D correct. A and B, assessing repayment ability of the entity. Repayment means repayment of what? Liabilities. You are not worrying about repayment ability, you are worrying about what? Measuring performance of performance risk and rewards. So, you need information 
you need to provide information to investor group about risk and return and decision uh, uh, to take decisions about holding investment you need to provide information to take decision about buy and sell decisions. So, answer is correct answer is what a you do not want information to on the assessment of repayment of loan repayment ability of the entity. 1.9 <coughs> which of the following statement about accounting concepts and policies are correct is are correct never the work here never the statement to come up again accounting concept accounting concepts number one companies should never change the presentation and classification of item in their financial statement even if the if there is a significant change in the nature of the operation wrong when the nature of operation is change you have to consider changes required to presentation and classification of the item in their financial statement right always same presentation same classification same disclosure is not applicable when the business environment nature change time to time the requirement also the presentation requirement disclosure requirement also will be change when the nature of the operation change first one is wrong then we have to understand the correct statement information in financial statements should be presented so as to be understood by users with reasonable knowledge and business sorry reasonable knowledge of the business and accounting correct information in the financial statement should be presented so as to be understand understood by users user puluan terung and puluang with it we have to present financial statements correct statement number two is correct in after that no b o s d is the correct answer should be because first statement is wrong in a a and c where the greater than whether no companies should be create large provision time to time sorry in time of company growth so that they can be utilized in more difficult time to keep profit on the same completely wrong when company is at the growth stage do we need to keep more provisions no provision according to lks 37 you will discuss in future provision means what so present obligation that you have as a result of past event and you are expecting future cash outflows based on that condition only you can make what provisions when your business is at a growth stage you will not make provision for that growth you will do growth so you will make provisions according to the standard so statement 2 and 3 sorry for 1 and 3 completely wrong statement 2 is the correct statement so then answer is what d question number 10 which of the following is true of partnership how do we are going to never the statement again look at the 1 2 3 there are three statements statement 1 partners are individual exposed to the debt limits yes uh, true statement never the work here honey right partners are individual exposed to their debt is limited no completely wrong their responsibility will spread to their personal properties also so then answer a and d you can remove you have to play with only b and c second statement financial statement for partnership by law must be produced and made public completely wrong right that we have discussed partnership account no need to publish right it is only for partners partnership is not a separate legal entity correct so the answer 
third statement is the only correct answer, correct statement. So, then the answer is what? C, simple. Question number 11, which of the following correctly define equity according to ISB conceptual framework of financial reporting? Ah, equity is presented in the present obligation, completely wrong no? Present obligation, is, uh, equity is not a present obligation of the organization. So, uh, present obligation of the entity, but read the balance part of this uh, answer, right? Of the entity arising from past event, the settlement of which expected to result in outflow from entity resource of embodied economic benefit. Wrong. Equity is resource controlled by entity as a result of past event from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity. That is the definition of what? Asset, not the equity. Equity is the residual interest in the asset of the entity after deducting its own liabilities, correct. That is the residual interest, which means all assets minus liabilities equal for what? Equity. So, in uh, short, Right? This is also a little important that is why I am using the board to explain equity. Right? You need to understand this properly. This can be tested in your exam as well. Right? Fine. Equity equal total assets minus total liability that is one definition of it. Equity equal, when you deduct total asset, total liabilities from total asset, what is remaining? Share capital plus reserves, reserves that is equity. Equity equal, what share capital plus reserves means net asset. So, these three interpretation can be tested in the exam, be careful. Equity equal total asset minus total liabilities, equity equal share, uh, equal share capital plus reserves, equity equal for net assets, right. So, the answer is what? C is the correct statement. Read the D also. Equity is increase in economic benefits during the accounting period in the form of inflows or enhancement of asset or decrease of liabilities, completely wrong. Question number 12, which of the following statement is true is or are true, correct answer ka hanyaping, true statement ka, right. Directors of the company have duty of care to show reasonable competence in their management of affairs of the company. Yes, they have, they should have relevant competence to perform their duties, correct. Directors of companies must act honest in what they consider to be best interest of the company. Yes, that we have discussed under fundamental ethical principles, honest mean integrity, correct. Director's main aim should be create wealth for shareholders, all answers are correct. So, then the correct answer is what? C 1, 2 and 3. The last question, sorry, uh, question number 12, yeah, question number 12 is uh, 1, 2 is 3 is correct, 13 uh, I have missed anyway. 14th, what is the role of ISB, International Accounting and Standard Board, Overseas Standard uh, setting and regulatory process, formulate financial reporting standard, review defective uh, accounts, no, control accountancy profession, no, C and D completely wrong. Now read A and B, overseas standard setting and regulatory process, more than that formulate international financial reporting standard, which is the which is the core responsibility of them. 
So then answer is what? B. Now look at, I have discussed with you 14 questions. All these 14 questions are from ACCA paper. Right, I told you, your CA study pack, CA uh, syllabus, much more similar to ACCA content. Therefore, since you do not have much more MCQ practice questions for chartered exams, better to go and refer some other exams to see how those exam questions have been set up. So, here I have discussed 14 questions from ACC related to this chapter. Those 14 questions, if you practice again, whatever the question they are from this chapter, you can be handled. That is not a magic or a cut science. But my final advice before we wrap up this session, half a study is more dangerous than zero knowledge. Why? Because one answer can be similar to another answer. To segregate the correct answer from that smaller differences, you must understand the theoretical aspects as well as you must understand the logical uh, background of each and every concept. If so, you can handle those questions. Thank you very much. We will meet up with the next 